Now I want to share with you some of the other experiments that I've done with the, the uh, cavernous structure effect. But I need to uh, give you a heads up here. You need to be very subjective if you are replicating these for yourself because sometimes the CSC will cause, Victor uh, Grabenikov noted that it would cause roots to grow away from an underground beehive or a hornet's nest or whatever they're dealing with. Um, some of the devices that he made actually had healthy effects that would make headaches go away and make people feel better. Some of the devices he noted would kill bacteria. Now there is in the human body good bacteria and bad bacteria and it does tend that the good bacteria seems to be the most sensitive to interference and antibiotics. So when you're dealing with the uh, CSE and some of these different things, you really just need to monitor yourself. If you're dealing with these things and it makes you feel worse, then don't be messing with them. And so, so just proceed at your own risk. Work, work with what works for you. Stay away from what doesn't work for you, because what works for one person may not be helpful for another person. One of the first experiments I did was I studied the flight of the June bug and the angle of the wing uh, protector, the, the overlay uh, shell. And so I replicated the angle that it is during flight and glued it onto this measuring cup here. And then what I wanted to do was to measure to see if there was an ion field over it. And again, a reminder to go to my spirit field research video part one to see how I use the pendulum. And if you haven't looked at that yet, what I have is the ability, if my body wants something, I can pick up a pendulum like this and I will get small twitching that will cause the pendulum to either go clockwise, which indicates that my body wants it, or counterclockwise, indicating that my body does not want it. And it's a very, very slight twitching of the hand, and I can actually uh, let my hand go, and it'll actually become quite, quite larger. But it's enough to make this move, so I know what my body wants or doesn't want it. Now, to find out if I, how I um, am reacting to the, a possible negative ion charge, I have over here a cigarette lighter outlet in my truck, and this silver part you see here is grounded. That's a negative ground. So when I go to do the test, I put my finger in this, I touch that so that I'm grounded, have a good negative ion charge. And that way with my other hand, when I hold the pendulum over this, if I get a strong swing like that, that tells me that there is a negative ion charge on it. And my body does not want any more because I'm already flooded by what I'm getting out of that cigarette lighter. And so when I tested this, when I attached the wings and did the test, I got a negative ion charge on it. And this made me curious because I thought, well, is it possible that what is happening is the negative ions form over that and as the wings flap under it, that the, the bug is actually pushing down negatively charged air. And that would give it a, a stronger lifting effect. But when I blew onto this charge, it did not move with the air. I couldn't couldn't blow it away. I couldn't detect any movement of it. So then I thought maybe it's possible that the ion charge over it actually acts like a hot air balloon because the earth has a negative ion charge and there would be a repelling effect off of it. But this was fascinating. And one of the things I was curious about was as the cavernous structure effect some of it may be related to the actual composition of the wing shells themselves, but then I thought, well, what about if I replicated just the shape? And these are just pieces of plastic spoons. And when I tested the plastic spoons, sure enough, there is a negative ion charge over the plastic spoons. I thought, well, this, this makes that pretty easy to research. I don't have to be finding bugs all the time to do this. And as a matter of fact, I went and replicated this pattern using spoons instead of these. And I also got the same reading, the same effect that I had with the other ones. 
and this one also. I could replicate this using spoons, which makes it a whole lot easier than trying to find all the bug parts. I was really encouraged to find that I could replicate some of the cavernous structure effect using simply plastic stuff. So then I thought, well, let's see if I can take and replicate the uh, divots that are on the bottom of the elytron that Viktor Grabenikov was researching. So what I did is I took uh, lids, and you can do this with pop bottle lids. These lids here are actually the lids off of my organ and my coconut water that we make kefir out of. And I adhered these as a pattern I used one space in between, a bottle in between. I lined them up and stuck them to this, glued them onto this cardboard. And I discovered that if I hold this over my head, four to eight inches over my head, that I actually feel like a static, the uh, same effect as if you put your hand on a Van de Graaff generator, that static in the hair. But when I went to check this for ion fields, I don't detect an ion field off of it, but still when I hold it over my head, my head feels like it's got a static charge building up in it. So this is something that you can replicate really easy. Just use pop bottle lids or whatever lids that you have and space them one one unit apart and uh, hold it over your head about four to, four to eight inches and see what kind of effect you get. The strongest CSE effects are with caverns that are circular, small, and porous. Now these here are plastic, they're circular, uh, they're not exactly porous, but these little raised areas do uh, create a porous effect in them, and they're not that small, but I tried experimenting with regular straws. Now, they're circular, but they're not porous on the inside, and I thought, well, let's experiment, see if we get any feelings off of these. These are the coffee straws. Now again, they're circular and they're small, but they're not porous on the inside. So there is uh, some sort of a feel I can get off of this, and I was thinking of cutting them up and making them into a big pattern and see what I get out of it, but that's stuff to do yet. And when I was thinking of small caverns, then I thought, well, wait a minute, cardboard, if you look at the end of cardboard, it has small porous not circular, they're more triangular. But So I got some of this factory cut cardboard and I held this over my head so that the uh, so it's going up and down and I could actually feel the CSE effect off of that. So that is very, very fascinating to see that something as simple as cardboard, a person can actually just cut up an Amazon box. Now, one of the other interesting features about the CSE is that when it comes out you know, of a cavern like this, it comes out directional. And there's nothing that's going to stop it. So if you have cardboard like here, it's actually folded over. But that does not stop the cavern from, or the, the CSE from coming out in this direction. It comes out in both directions because of the caverns. So a person can either cut up cardboard or fold up cardboard and make a, a block like this and then hold it over your head four to eight inches and see what kind of effect you get from it. Speaking of cardboard, I haul a lot of rolls of paper to printing companies and the rolls are stood up in the back of my semi but to keep them from sliding around we put these blocks of cardboard between them and to keep them from running into the sliding into the walls and stuff so if you have a printing company around your place you might want to check their garbage can to see if they have blocks like this this is six foot or six inch by six inch and three feet long but if you look at the pattern of the cardboard in the middle it's very much like a beehive so here we've got a fairly small uh, and they're porous and they're fairly round and if I hold this over my head with, and the energy would be flowing through here, I can actually feel it. 
So there is definitely something to this cavernous structure effect. But again, it doesn't have to be, the ends don't have to be open. I can have this shut like that. The energy will still flow out of it. Here is another piece of cardboard that we use for the same thing for the paper. And this one is all about three inches thick. And the pattern in the middle is also fairly, well, this is more square. But this one here that I find, I like, I actually have this in the bunk over my bed and I sleep under it. And it does seem to be kind of soothing and helps me to sleep better. But I'm still experimenting. Now this one here I made from Amazon boxes and I cut them to five inch by five inch squares. And I lined up these squares so that the, the uh, so that the pattern, the, the grooves were all the same. And then what I did is I started at the bottom and then I would move the stack 30 degrees, glue it, 30 degrees, glue it, 30 degrees, glue it, until I made this uh, here. And then I drove a uh, coat hanger through the center of it, bent it over and taped it down so it's not going anywhere. And then I hung it on a swivel, a fishing swivel. And this is one with the ball bearings in it. And that's just hanging off of a shelf using a bent up paper clip. And I found that for me, if I spin it one way, it feels good. If I spin it the other way, it feels bad. So there is something. <laughs> you can experiment with it and see what you get. I experimented with using the brass casings from a nine millimeter and a 380, glued them together and sure enough, the CSC uh, operates off of that. You get the, the round. Now, they're not porous, but they're fairly small. And Viktor Gubinikov spoke about a hive that he was researching that had the chambers of it were more funnel-shaped or bottle-shaped. So when I was at the range afterwards, I was picking up the casings from my AR-15, and I thought, hey, wait a minute. Those are bottle shaped. They have a narrower neck to them. So I glued them into this plastic casing here and did experiments with them. And sure enough, the CSE is affected by it. And one of the things I wanted to see is uh, Viktor Gubinikov said that the uh, CSE comes out directionally and is not stopped. There's nothing that can block it. So I thought, well, if it's electrical, it wouldn't come out the back, it would come out the front. But I found out it, something like this, it comes out in both directions. And the way that I figured it out was I get a negative ion charge over this wing. But I found that if this wing, set of wings, is in the uh, fields that are coming off, then I do not get an ion reading at all. So for something like that, I get an ion reading here, but if I move it so that it's getting hit by the CSE coming out, suddenly I don't get an ion reading. Move it over here, I get the ion reading. Move it back here, the ion reading disappears. And also when I tried the back end of it, got the exact same thing. The same effect. So the CSE was coming out the back end also. And here was another way that I arranged it since I realized that they are they are, come out both directions. I reversed the pattern of the AR-15 shells here. So this one can actually be set and it flows out in both directions. But it gives it a fairly small hole. It is semi-porous because it's it's got carbon and lead inside those. And it, uh, it actually does generate. Apparently, as the caverns become smaller, the frequency becomes higher and the power increases. And the bugs that Viktor Gubinikov made his flying machine out of, the caverns in the bottom of the shells had to be seen under a microscope and magnified about a thousand times. 
So I thought, well, let me see how small I can work with. So what I did is I got this plastic lid and Viktor Gubenikov observed with his microscope that a lot of the caverns in the bug shells were star shaped. So I looked over my tools and I found a Torx head wrench uh, tool that I had a star head on it. First I tried using a screwdriver heads, they didn't work. I tried using round heads, they didn't work. But the star head seems to simulate the porous effect for the CSE. So what I did is I took the the Torx head and I hammered it into this. I set this on a piece of granite and hammered it into this. You could see the little divots that I have in there with the Torx head shape in it. And I found that this was very strong. The field, when I set it down in an area, the field would immediately go out to about three feet and it would even pulsate. It would increase and decrease, increase and decrease, and slowly it would expand itself out to about four or five feet. And to check something else that Victor said, he said that you could take and remove this from an area and the field would remain. Well, it took several minutes for the field to build up to four to five feet. So then I would take and remove this from the area and I would check the area. And sure enough, it took a few minutes for the field to dissipate from that area. So that was very, very fascinating. But that's the smallest I can get it. But a person can actually get almost microscopic divots if you use a laser printer. So there are a lot of uh, places that have uh, laser devices that you can either into metal or into plastic. You can have a laser pattern cut into it, little star shapes, and I would get them aligned as, as good as you could, but a person can actually replicate that fairly closely.